And I'd like to present to you here some of the samples from my laboratory. That was in operation 1979 to 1988. And I would like to start with uh, that my laboratory was a Tesla type of laboratory incorporating various other technologies of Van de Graaff and um, RF generation equipment and nuclear equipment, weak nuclear forces. And um, my lab was uh, powered by 400 uh, watts power up to uh, 4,000 watts power. And presenting to you the first sample here of aluminum metal, very heavy and dense. It appears that this sample was literally pulled apart this way. As one can see, the strings coming out of the end of it. A lot of energy to do that. The material must have been semi-fluid for that to happen. In the lab, this happens frequently, and also levitation happens frequently. And if it, uh, the samples don't levitate, sometimes nothing will happen, or the samples themselves will be pulled apart or broken in two, as this piece here. These pieces are samples of the 1987 and 1988 time period. One can imagine the amount of power to do that. Even conventionally, this kind of power would be immense to, to rip, literally rip this size of material apart. But this material was ripped apart at a distance from the machinery from 6 feet to about 100 feet. And I will proceed on to other samples here. This sample of brass, um, one can see heavy disruption in this material caused by the space-time energy produced in my laboratory. One can see heavy distortions in the brass material and indentations and disruption and a lot of, the, of energy that uh, was trapped and released in this sample. This, of course, is heavy, heavy brass, machine brass. Um, I would like to go on to say at this point that um, being energetic in nature, severely disrupting molecular bonds in any material, resulting in catastrophic disruptive fracturing, causing controlled plastic deformation in metals, creating unusual aurora-like lighting effects in midair, inducing apparent large-scale magnetic monopoles in metals, causing changes in chemical composition of the metals, other long-range effects and many unknown effects to date. Did break in two, but was heavily distorted through these fields at a distance. As I slowly rotate this around, one can see all the intricate um, distortions. One can theorize that uh, perhaps this was in a, in a space-time uh, field or a space-time area. And this is what happened. Perhaps the time differential to gravity was disturbed and produced this. Of course, one can look at the works of ballet and, and see some of the uh, parallels in, in that type of research in the, in the models, in the mathematical models. Sometimes our samples will turn transparent and on analysis of a particular sample, by the government of Canada, we found that uh, some of these samples were transparent, where one could actually see through it. This is on Mini-8 film. And how this sample came into being, one can see one sample actually went into another sample. This knife into this piece of um, aluminum metal. This piece was shaved down until it started to get onto the uh, piece that was embedded in there. So 
theoretically and quite possibly this sample was transparent or fluid in time and space. Here. Copper being very conductive and very dense and heavy produced quite dramatic changes in the material itself. On many samples that were analyzed, we found very, the impurities in the atomic structure, or the alloys, congealed and formed pure atomic elements inside. So if this, let's say, had a mix of uh, oh, some sodium, perhaps, or phosphorus, these deposits would be found in the material in one location under X-ray dispersion analysis and scanning electron microscope analysis. And some of our metals have actually been transmutated to another form of material. Analyzed at various laboratories around the world. And finally, I'd like to present my sample here that keeps changing its characteristics. It's a stainless, uh, stainless steel piece. I believe magnetic stainless meaning that if you put a magnet to it, it, uh, it uh, turn, it uh, is magnetic. But you can see along here that this fellow is changing his characteristics. All these little valleys and grooves in here keep changing very slowly, and there's actually a buildup of um, bits of him at the end of here. And I found that he's probably a large-scale magnetic, magnetic monopole. And when I started playing around with coins with this, and here, and then I flip around here, of course there's nothing. I come to the Canadian quarters, no problem for him. To the it's very powerful. Of course, nothing here. We'll try it playing with him in the center and see if he picks up anything. I think so. At the very end here. So, sort of ending on that note, um, I would like to um, thank you for your indulgence and hope you have enjoyed this um, video on, on my samples. Thank you.